Welcome back to another episode of Stay Sprung. And after living with this watch for approximately two years, I would like to share my thoughts and opinions with you about the Max Bill Chronoscope by Jung Hans. My initial video gave a specs breakdown on the watch, but today I'll talk about some of the pros and cons. The Chronoscope comes in a stainless steel 40 millimeter case and is 14 and a half mils tall, which leads to my first pro. While there are different dials and color options, I chose the silver numerical option. The dial is captivating with its soft satin white finish merged with the metallic flaking that literally has a glitten shimmer to it that I have yet to see in any other watch, reminiscent of white sand. The dial takes up the entirety of the 40 millimeters and is needed with indices for every minute around the entire watch with hour markings on the inner and minute markings on the outer, plus two sub dials, an hour and minute dial, both with their own markings and weight, there's still more. Super Luminova dots at three, six and nine o'clock with dual dot markings at 12 o'clock and the date window also rests at three o'clock. Despite sounding busy as five o'clock traffic in Brooklyn, the Max Bill does an excellent job of utilizing the 40 millimeters and not appearing to have things bunched up and cluttered. I really love that look. Powered by a modified Valju 7750, its huge unidirectional rotor can be felt pulsating and rotating on the wrist at times. And under extreme swings of the wrist, can even be heard. But I mean, who's going to be playing football in a nice wristwatch? That guy. Which leads me to my next con. The convex dome crystal is plexiglass and not sapphire crystal. And while this isn't a deal breaker for me, the chronoscope retails at just above $1,800. And well, it doesn't have sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I truly love the dome and understand the sapphire can distort the look of the face by being shaped in this manner, it's still an option I would have loved to have. The chrono pushes are a bit snug and tight when trying to engage and haven't gotten any less resistant in two years. And I have no issue with this, but it's just something to note. And Yung Hans does produce detonators for the military, so maybe there's something there. And moving on along to the rear of the Max Bill, the engraved case back, which I believe is the watch's Achilles heel or its weakest point. By no means in construction or integrity to the watch, but in durability and the ability to be scratch resistant. I baby all my watches regardless of price, and I always rest them on pillows when not being worn. No exceptions. So to see this air quotes stainless steel case back look like one of my old DMX CDs from the 90s, that's not a good look by any means. So basically, my arm hair did this to the steel, is what you're saying. <laughs> 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 Other than this one gripe for me, unwearability, I love the base strap that the chronoscope came with, but the color is hard to keep clean. Which leads me to another huge pro. This watch can take on just about any strap, and appears as if the strap was made and issued with this watch. I'm loving this watch, and I truly acquired it solely for the aesthetics and look of the dial. And I can deal with its few cons, from the scratch magnet of a case back, to the domed plexiglass crystal. And I mean, hey, who's going to be walking around looking at the back of their watch while they're wearing it all day? And or who's going to be playing football in it? That guy. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. And oh yeah, stay sprung. Yeah, I have the rainbow sprinkles with the cone.